Right, so this is today's job. We've got two alcoves, open air alcoves, 500 deep, quite a small room. Yeah, we've got to unload the van now. But yeah, we're just unloading the van now. Not much. We're in St Albans at the moment, so hardly anywhere to park. But this is what we've got today. All covered up in removal blankets. Got a smoke veneer. Relatively simple alcove units, two doors on each. And yeah, we're gonna start with getting all of this out. Then we'll do our usual bearers, putting the carcasses together. But half an hour, I will have this out, and then we'll get cracking. So, van's all unloaded. The first thing I will start doing is start taking off the skirtings in two places. So against the chimney breast and the back wall to gain some space. This room's tiny, so we're trying to gain as much as we can. We have a shutter here, so we planned that that side of the wardrobe is about 70 mil away from the wall um, but we need the wardrobes to be as close to that chimney breast as possible in, a, in order for our side panel to cover that gap this corner is level this one is not so i've just pinged off the skirtings there or i'm in the middle of pinging off the skirting is relatively simple they're just pinned on just get a lever bar in there and just pour them off nice and easy So with those two skirtings off, it leaves this tiny little bit of skirting. I'm just going to run a handsaw down it so we can get this side panel overlapping this corner to close up the gap. So yeah, I'm just going to run that saw down. means we can get our wardrobe right up against that corner now right while I tuck into my breakfast Sean's just putting in the biscuits the, the bourbons he's putting the bourbons in the more like digestives really <laughs> so we're just getting those in I always say we Sean's getting them in and he's just getting the sides ready he's just getting all the biscuits in he's gonna get the hanging rail brackets on possibly put the shelf pegs in um, I'm going to, in the meantime, just start with the bearers, so I'm going to look at my technical drawings, which are here. going to look through them, just make sure I've got my sizes right, hopefully, across things I have. And then I'm just going to mark out where the bearer's going to go using a bit of masking tape. And then I'll cut back the carpet, and then I can start leveling these two bearers up. So we've got one carcass together, this one's got a chest of drawers in the bottom corner. So we've got to be a bit careful when we spin this around, because there's not too much support on that little L-shaped piece. Um, I've got, oh, just knocked my screws over, typical. Um, got these bearers down, um, they're ready to go. We're about 50 mil high from the carpet to the start of the bearer, I've allowed 50 and 50. I've minimized how much um, voids we're doing on both wardrobes. I'm just halfway through this set of packers now, I've got my base packers down. And um, yeah, gonna build up, get my bearers down there. So we're gonna flip this over now and get the backing on. Then that can be slipped into this space and then Sean can then crack on with carcass number two. Am I correct there, Sean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we use 30 mil screws to put the backings on. We don't use pins, we don't use glue. We just line up one corner first, for example, that corner and that corner, get the short edge screwed up. Before we screw it up, we use a three mil drill bit to pre-drill. Knock those screws in and then just make sure it's flush all, all along one edge. And then we just go around the remaining. If you haven't got any support on the inside, any fixed shelves, just make sure that it's flush as you go along with the remaining side. And then as you can see here, we've got an upright and a shelf going across so then we just um yeah pre-draw those two wherever there's a fixed shelf or a division we've uh fixed with screws we just find that that's the best way rather than pins and glue it's just um not good enough pins and glue and this one was a pain in the ass a bit tricky to get in i knew that it was gonna be hard 
Um, we didn't want to make this carcass too small. These these alcoves are relatively small as it is, and this is a tiny room, so we tried to maximize the wardrobe. Um, I didn't want to come in as far as this window ledge, as you can see, it sticks out about 90 mil, 100 mil, and we made it so this carcass is about 80. So it's, it's about 10 mil step back, but it just meant that trying to get the carcass into that corner was tricky. So we ended up getting that corner in first. So the carcass was an, at an angle, we got it in, but because from corner to back corner, that diagonal of the carcass that way, it's obviously a diagonal. So it's, it was longer than the opening. So what we've had to do is cut back the skirting and we had to take this side off to get the carcass in. And then we had to put the side back on, but obviously then we can't get our fixings back in. So we've ended up just getting some glue um, keeping the biscuits keeping the biscuits in place but um, yeah we've got glue in all the joints and then we just put packers wedges in between the wall and that side and pushed it back into place so we've got nice and tight now so we've got the joint closed up everywhere which is good so downside is that we've had to cut this skirting back well it shouldn't be a problem we're just going to get that glue back in put a bit of filler use the customer's paint and um shouldn't even notice but other than that the drawer is in it's only a diddy, diddy little drawer just for belts and ties and stuff adjustable shelves below um we've made it so it's slightly bigger this section it's what the customer wanted um a small amount of hanging to maximize the shelving space below in the drawer and um this one is just adjustable shelves at the bottom and so yeah so we've got nice tight fixings now. We've got a fixing in that corner and um, we fixed down into the bearers in both. This one is really solid. This one is getting there. We're just gonna need to get one fixing in that top corner, probably through the, through the carcass, see how it is, and then possibly into that corner too. Um, yes, yeah, so apart from that, carcasses are in. We've cut back for the cheeks to run in. So if I just give you a little demo, so just imagine this is our side panel. We've got a side panel going on here like that. We've cut back that skirting. Um, it's a bit of a gap there, but 19 mil oak veneer is bigger than MDF. So that's nice and tight when the oak goes in. So that cheek should run in nicely there. It was giving us a nice joint and we've done the same to that side there. It's like, 19 20 mil at the bottom to not near enough touching at the top so this one is exactly the same as the other one really i cut a beautiful trim here look at that my cheek look at that beautiful scribe and that's all freestyle no fancy jigs beautiful um also bottom trim in we create a 22 mil overhang of the panel to allow for your 19 mil door and a three mil gap behind so the door will be flush with that trim we're going to make this trim flush over there so we're going to cut it to suit that is the length of the carcass as you can see that bottom trim runs all the way through and then the top and then the side trim just is the same length as the carcass both at the bottom and the top so that's what I'm going to do, cut that trim to length. I've already got my measurements. I take about six measurements, seven measurements, transfer that on the piece, cut it with the plungy, and job done. That'll only take me five minutes, plus 20. <laughs> Sean's just marking out this cheek over here. We were able to squeeze half of this cheek here into the gap because the gap was quite big at the bottom, but then we stepped in and then the other half is on on the front of the chimney breast. You could just probably just see a little slight line there, but it looks near enough seamless. This cheek is literally up against the chimney. So we've just taken our increments and um, we'll check it for square at the ceiling and the floor, do our length, then cut it to width. And again, screw it on with a 22 mil overhang. So the easy bits are literally the tops and the bottoms. Don't mind doing those. Um, it's just tops and bottoms. Well, the plimp runs through from the cheek, 
or the carcass, shall I say, all the way to the skirting. And the same at the top. So from the cheek to the wall, and then three or four increments, and they go in quick. It's just ones that you need to scribe. This one we're gonna need to scribe. But the good thing about taking this skirting off over here is that we're able to get our bottom trim in and our side trim in without, without having to scribe them. And then that skirting piece will go in afterwards up against the trims. So we're getting through the trims. Two done, six to go, well, including cheeks. And then it's just hanging the doors, a little hoover up and put the handles on. We've got the bench set up. So this is our setup. We always use it and this works for us. We've got a Trend T something, Hoover, can't remember, T27, T, whatever, it's the square one, not the circle one. Two Ketterber, two Ketter workbenches, two pieces of nine mil to cut on. And we've got two tracks. So we've got a small one for doing cross cuts. We cut a 1400 in half to create um, a smaller track to be able to cut cheeks. And we've got the longer 1400 one to just cut along the length of the trim. Always use a plungy, we don't use a jigsaw. Not really a fan of using a jigsaw for trims. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna go and um, start marking out to cut some more trims. Right, I had the radio on, just started recording, and Sean said, turn the radio off. <laughs> YouTube doesn't like radios, music. Um, yeah, so trims and cheeks getting done, Sean. I'm trying to film you here. Stop running away. <laughs> girls want to see you. Do they? Yeah, say hello to all the girls. Hello, treacles. Hello, treacles. <laughs> um, Sean's marking out the last cheek. And um, that should be in, in what, 60 seconds? Come on, if you don't... Any, <laughs> any more, then it's just... You're putting turbo on. Turbo. <laughs> um, I'm going to go downstairs and start sorting these hinges out. All right, bruvs. Say yes, master. <laughs> Yes, master. So, it's good to Sean. All right, let's go down. So we're downstairs now, and um, as you can see, the doors are laying up against the wall. We've got here four, we've got four hinges per door. These doors are around 450 to 500 wide, two different sizes. But what we do is we just hinge them and we put these little rubber grommets on. Probably say this every video, but for anyone who's not watched me, we use these little soft rubber grommets on top and bottom of the doors, possibly in the center as well. Um, so we use the GTV hinges. We really like the GTV hinges because I really like the adjustment. They're nice looking hinges. These are soft close, um, hydraulic, and um, these are the full overlay. You can get these in half overlay and inset. But this particular pack, it comes as, in, as a two pack. Um, just same as everything else, it's clip on. It's a 35 mil hole, same as any other brand. And I like the GTV firstly, because they're good value for money. Really, really good value for money. And I've used Blum lots of times. And I, to be honest, I can't tell any difference between the way these perform and the Blum. They work exactly the same. They've got the same soft close action. We've been using these for, I don't know, five, six, seven years, maybe more. And we've not had one complaint where one person says one's broken. They just keep going, going. So really happy with those. And like I said, they've got a nice bit of adjustment for um, the left and the right of the door. Whereas I find other brands don't have as much. They've got a half a turn. And this is what they look like. Nice looking hinge. These you can wind the grub screws in and out quite a lot. So, um, yeah, sometimes gets you out of trouble when you've got six, seven, eight doors in a row you need to line up. But anyway, I'm going to crack on. I'm going to adjust these back from the plates to the hinge. I'm going to adjust everything back so they're all the same. We've got 20 hinges to do. And once they're done, we'll bring them up and hang them. Look at that. Sean's trying to take my nickname as Scribe King. Beautiful. Perfect. All the way up. Even to the top, perfect. Well done, Sean. Thanks. Give you, give you ten out of ten out of ten for that. <laughs> right. Twelve out of six. Twelve out of six. <laughs> um, so we fix these in position where the hinge is going to be. Probably say this. I feel like I say this every video. Sean probably Sean's probably sick of it. Um, but we've got four hinges going on each door, and where the hinge is going to be fixed to the carcass, that's where we get our fixing, and they're already pre-drilled. 
that one behind the shelf. Oh, look at that. Right. Oh, this one's behind the shelf. That's where the hinge was going. That yeah. is the hinge. So one already three drilled. And um, we've got four and what, you're just doing an extra one because you just yeah, need yeah, to pull it, pull it in pull it slightly. In. And where there's adjustable shelf, well done, Sean. He's learnt from the best. That's all I have to say. So the light's not great in here at the moment. It doesn't really show the colour off. It looks a little bit yellowy, but it's looking good. One door on. Just need to do one more door and one more trim. Handles and done on this one. Okay, you're getting close. One more trim to go. Just that one. I mean, it's coming together really nicely, looking really nice. It's a shame that it's pretty dark in here, plus it's a dark oak veneer, so you can't really see how nice it really is. But the trim is all done here. Let's close the door up. The trim's all done, cut around the skirting. We've got that block at the bottom now to accept our last door. And that's how we do it. We just put a door on edge, six mil packer up against the carpus. Screw it on. Sean's just finishing off the last trim. Pressure. Pressure. But it's good though. What time is it, Sean, roughly? Where's the sun? Oh, the sun's out. Let's look at the sun and see where it is in the sky. Um, half past 20 to 4. 20 to 4, and we started at 8. This one was a little bit tricky just because that unit really. Yeah, why are you asking me? It clocked on the I know, I, I swiped it down, didn't I, while I was filming? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> who wants to see this trim go in? Not me. No? <laughs> right, box in. Sean, on. Trim. Oh, I'm taking the ice off. I don't think you need to. Nice crisp edge. Will it go first time? Oh my god, listen. Listen to that sound. When it's got a tiny bit of resistance. Ah, oh, what would you give that out of 10, Sean? Oh my God, that was perfection. Don't go too far. You know what it's like, one tap too far and it's game over. You never get it out again. That is what you call, Sean, show them your face. <laughs> Scribe King. <laughs> Have a look. And who needs scribing tools? Not me or Sean. Get that done in 10 minutes, no problem. So that's going to be screwed underneath with some 30s. As you can see, we've got one screw there, hole, one hole, and one over there. And that is all the trims done. Right, so that was a tough day. We had problems with the doors. The doors ended up being very, very slightly too wide. We've managed to just get enough out of the hinges to have the gap in the middle of both doors. They all work. But yeah, to get the doors on, it was just a nightmare today. Don't know what was happening. Um, but I couldn't record much, just so busy. Six o'clock now, and i um, just finished putting handles on, hoovered up. I'll show you what we got. There we go. The light's not great anymore, but, um, and the grain does look a little bit funny in this light, but it looks perfectly good in real life. Um, handles really do show the wardrobes off and um, yeah nice little pair so the problems that we had was getting that carcass in to start with that delayed us an hour and then we've been on the doors for two hours trying to get them on tweaking them getting them nice and straight like I said we didn't have much gap to play with in the center and um, don't know what's happened there we've cut all the doors to exactly the right measurements but we managed to make it work so yeah, it's been a long day. We're gonna be going now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take it easy. Ciao for now.